What's up guys? I'm so glad you could join me. Today we're going to be looking at a very interesting topic, specifically called energy profiles. So what do you think we're going to have to do with that? Well, let's find out. Well, today's first thing we're going to look at is exothermic reaction progress. The second thing is endothermic reaction progress. And then finally, we're going to round it all off by measuring reaction extents. Well, this might seem a bit vague to you, so let's go through it individually with me. And then let's see how well we can do. So, an exothermic reaction, you should remember, is any reaction that gives off more energy than it took in. Well, let's quickly plot that on a graph so that we understand how it works. But remember, this is progress that we're looking at. So, it's measured against time, and we're looking at the energy specifically. Well, firstly, we have the reactants at energy level way up here and outside of your viewpoint. And then we have the products way down here, again, outside of your viewpoint. But what we're looking at here is now how does the products, or sorry, the reactants, get to the products. Well, let's see what happens. We have our lines designating where they are with respect to one another. And here it goes. It grows, hits a peak, and then dips way down there. Well, let's find some characteristics of this curve that we're interested in. Specifically, the activation complex. This is the point in the reaction cycle in terms of time when all of the reactants have lost their bonds, right? And then now they're starting to find partners to produce their products. So, what do we like about this? Specifically, we want to know what is the activation energy because we care about how much energy it took to create these new bonds. Well, in this case, we designated with EA and it's the difference between the point of activation energy and how much the energy of reactants had to start off with. And the next thing that we're interested in is the amount of energy that was given off by the reaction, the enthalpy, the delta H, the delta being that triangle that you see here. Well. Delta H in this case will be negative. But you might be saying, Zach, that doesn't make any sense. How can you have negative energy if we've just been giving it off? Remember, alpha, this reaction is measured from the perspective of the reactants. Because we looked at it, we saw the energy of the reactants in this case. And that's why it's negative. To their perspective, they've lost energy going from the reactant state to the product state. So Let's quickly see what happens if we introduce a catalyst to this system. Well, a catalyst, we remember, doesn't influence the energy levels of the reactant, specifically all the products. But what it does do is we know it reduces the activation energy. So let's quickly see what, what does the energy profile of this look like? Well, it grows just like a normal one, but it peaks far smaller and it finishes a little bit sooner. But don't worry too much about that. What we really care about and state it in your exam very clearly for your examiner to read is you can see the dotted line is far smaller. Your activation energy due to the catalyst is far smaller than the activation due to the just general reaction. Okay. So that's the exothermic reaction. We give off energy. Well, let's quickly look at the endothermic reaction. You should remember this is the opposite of the exothermic reaction. So here, the energy is absorbed by the machine. Well, what does that energy profile, you, you might ask, look like? Well, again, we draw our axes, the time at the bottom, the energy as our dependent variable. An interesting way to remember this is I is for independent and D is for dependent. Anyway, let's get back to what we were doing. The reactants start here at the bottom this time. And unfortunately, again, they now have to go up. They're giving off energy. Well, here's the, product, the product's energy level. So what does this energy profile look like? Well, it grows, 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 and peaks way at the top and then dips at the bottom again. Isn't that awesome? Well, we want to see what characteristics do we care about here. Remember, we care about the activated complex, the point at which all of the bonds in the system have broken and they're preparing to become products. And this activation energy is also what we care about because this is how much energy it took to break those bonds of the reactants and to produce the products. Well, we denote it here. It's the difference between reactant energy and activated energy. And then we care about the enthalpy. The enthalpy being the difference in energy from the reactants to the products. So, and then in this case, remember the exothermic reaction was negative. So in this case, because the endothermic reaction is the opposite to exothermic, well, in this case, it's going to be positive because the chemicals within the system, they've gained energy. They've been added to their energy levels. Well, that's everything we need to know from this thing. But we still want to know what does a catalyst do to the system? Well, remember catalysts don't do anything to the system but lower the activation energy. So let's see what happens. The reaction energy to start off with stays the same. The product energy also stays the same because it doesn't affect it. But if we look at how this graph grows, Watch in the animation here. It hits that lower peak yet again. So here we can see the activation energy low EA is significantly larger than EAC, the activation energy of the catalyst.
And that's the effect catalyst has on an endothermic reaction. Isn't that awesome? Well, let's quickly move on to our next section. That's measuring the reaction extent. Now this might be a bit of a difficult topic for you to understand if I just give it to you like this, but let me explain it to you like this. Well, measuring the reaction extent, we're measuring how long it took to produce a certain amount of product. And one of the easiest ways to do that, and you may be asked this, you may be asked in a number of ways how they may ask this question, but specifically the displacement method. It uses a similar apparatus to the one you see in the diagram on the board now, where we have our reactants here at the bottom, sorry for the jar there, the reactants at the bottom, and then those reactants come together, they gain energy, and then they produce the gas that goes up the pipe and into the syringe. Originally the syringe started here, and then over time the syringe slowly gets pushed back as the volume of gas that's produced increases. And all the time whilst this is occurring, we're jotting down T1, T2, T3, the times that it took to get to certain points. So we can measure the rate of reaction, or the volume of gas produced. So let's quickly see what do we do with this. Well, we've been denoting how long it took the syringe to move down the line here, producing gas. So what we can do is we can draw our axes here against time on the bottom, and then on the x-axis, you guess the volume, right? So then we start off here, zero, because that's the point just here. And that means that we have zero gas, because there's nothing, nothing's happened at T0, nothing's happened inside the reaction. We drop in our reactants here, and then we start measuring, and we'll notice, whoa, it grows, and then it slows down. Because at this point here, the reaction's done. We've, we've used up all of our reactants, and we've produced all of the products we can. And that'll happen as you go down the line. The sort of questions you'll be asked for this is, A, how, what sort of reaction is this? How do you measure these things? How would you go about whatever? How would you go about defining what you just did, or drawing graphs? All of this is what you'll be expected to understand. And using simple things like this where you have to connect dependent and independent variables are things for you guys to understand in your questions you've got to do. Okay guys, let's quickly review what we had to do today and then we can finish off. Well, the first thing we looked at exothermic reactions. This is where the delta H, remember the enthalpy, is negative. Oh, we'll quickly denote it like that so you remember. The endothermic reaction, this is where our delta H is positive, while our products are going up, remember that, up for endothermic. And then finally, the measuring reaction rates. This is how long it took to get the reaction to run its course. Okay guys, good luck for your paper and I'll see you again soon.